Guys can go down at any time, whether that's in the game and practice. And you know, we got to hold each other accountable to be prepared and next man up. And I feel like every guy in this locker room is capable of stepping up whenever their number is called. You know and I mean, that's why we're professionals and you got to be able to prepare like that every week. That was Morgan Burnett before practice here today at the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex. And he was a full participant again on Thursday. Let's take a look at your practice report. Some good news in terms of guys putting two full days back to back. Uh, we'll start with that. Cam Canada, we mentioned Morgan Burnett, Ryan Switzer, and also Rosie Nix. Not practicing, though. This is the bad news. James Conner has already been ruled out. Anthony Ciccolo and Marcus Gilbert not practicing again at all this week. And then Ramon Foster getting a coach's day off. Everybody else listed as full. Antonio Brown, Joe Hayden, and Marquise Pouncey. Those were all guys who had a coach's day on Wednesday. Joining me now to break it down, Bob Lariola. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, um, in keeping with my uh, personality, I'll go with the bad news. Um, <laughs> the, the, what, what's, you know, the Marcus Gilbert thing, uh, you know, he's a really good player, um, but I don't know, I'm kind of used to that he's not practicing. And so uh, the Matt Filer thing I uh, am comfortable with, Matt Filer playing at right tackle, and so I don't see that as that big of a deal. Uh, the one thing that uh, is kind of, uh, I won't say alarming, because it will be alarming tomorrow maybe, uh, is the Anthony Ciccolo situation. Anthony Ciccolo uh, is having a very nice season. Uh, he is a competent uh, member of the uh, outside linebacker rotation, the three-man rotation. And if he is unable to play, uh, there are two options as I see them. One would be uh, to go the whole game with the two starters and uh, not rest them at all, those being Bud Dupree and T.J. Watt. And the other option is to work Ola Adeni in uh, at some point uh, in some sort of a rotation. Um, you know, Ola is... He had some moments in training camp, and he flashed in the preseason. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, but I, these games, you know, this to me, even though it's not mathematically a must-win, it is a must-win for all intents and purposes for the Steelers. And putting in a very green player at a position where the Steelers like to do a lot of different things with those guys, uh, you know, makes me a little bit nervous. So um, the Anthony Ciccolo absence to me. Uh, could be somewhat somewhat significant if he is absent. All right, and we'll know more about that on Friday. As Lab said, of course, no James Conner as the Steelers get ready to head to the West Coast. Here's offensive coordinator Randy Feekner. We're going to still address it as trying to be as balanced as we can, run when we can run. Uh, it all comes down to efficiency runs. Um, I thought we were kind of moving in that direction the other night, and we got a couple of costly penalties and kind of set us back. I mean, we're still going to force it and keep working on it. And we got capable runners. Um, you know, Steven's been a longtime veteran. Uh, he's been a runner. Um, Jalen's been in game, so this isn't new to him. Maybe new is maybe more carries in a game uh, opportunity. But um, um, we're still excited where we're at with who we have. All right, next man up, Labs, Steven Ridley and Jalen Samuels saying yesterday that they were splitting first team reps. What do you think heading into Oakland about the situation of the running back by committee style? Well, uh, I'd rather look at it uh, at the running game, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to the uh, five big guys up front and say, this, this is on you, fellas. I mean, you are uh, one of the best units in the league, and we need you to kick butt and take names. And uh, the running game, you know, the Raiders are 31st in the NFL in rush defense. And so for me, um, if, if I get a quality performance from the five guys up front, uh, I, don't, I won't say it doesn't matter who the running back is, but I certainly think that the, the people that the Steelers have, the options uh, for the guys carrying the ball will be sufficient uh, for the running game to uh, contribute in the way it needs to uh, on Sunday in Oakland. All right, a big congratulations to defensive end Cam Hayward, who was named the Pittsburgh Steelers nominee for the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award. This is not the first time uh, that Cam has received this honor as a nominee for the Steelers. Of course, we know what a player he is on the field, but off the field, Cam doing nothing 
uh, but giving back to the Pittsburgh community and helping all of those around him. Here's Cam on the honor. I know the guys in the locker room are very deserving as well. You know, Marquise Pouncey has done a tremendous amount of work in the community. You know, Ben, uh, Joe Hayden, um, you know, most, multiple guys just, you know, not only give their time but care about it. Um, and to be nominated, uh, I take a lot of responsibility with that. And, um, you know, I just want to give back to my community. I want to continue to uh, play good on the field and uh, continue to help off the field. And the winner of the Walter Payton Man of the Year will be announced the night before the Super Bowl this year. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, Tunch joins me, joins me with his scouting report of the Oakland Raiders. Uh, and I think Gruden does a good job of this. I don't think they they try to have high frequency routes and stuff like that. They try to change things up a little bit. I think there are some things that they they will try to do to us, and, and uh, we got to be able to defend it. Hopefully. All right, Tunch Ilkin is here to talk about the Raiders' offense. Up first with the Sirius XM scouting report. You know, so Missy, one of the things you look at the Oakland Raiders, and it seems like the last couple of years they've been uh, experiencing a fire sale. Everybody that uh, could hurt you is no longer on this team, with the exception of uh, Jared Cook. Uh, you know, especially, I feel sorry for Derek Carr. Now, Derek Carr is a good quarterback, but uh, when he lost to Monty Cooper and he lost his deep threat, now the deep threat is Jared Cook. But let's talk about uh, uh, Derek Carr. Uh, last couple weeks, he's looked pretty sharp. And I think one of the things uh, that I'm noticing is that he's finally getting comfortable in uh, John Gruden's offense. I think it's taken him a little while. but And you would expect that because when he is on rhythm, when he is on time, the ball's coming out of here, coming out of there fast, and, and he's making the right reads. One thing that you notice is when he is looking – pre-snap to the read he's going to go to, that's when he is most effective. One of the things that you don't see is a lot of deep patterns. And one of the reasons is that is he's got two rookies starting at offensive tackle. And uh, uh, he's been sacked a lot. He's been hit a lot. And one of the things that you notice is that he is trying to get rid of the ball very quickly. Now, when you look for a deep threat, it's that guy number right there, number 87, Jared Cook. Jared Cook uh, is fast. He's 6'5". He's big. He's strong. He's got great hands. And one of the things, he is the guy that uh, uh, Derek Carr looks for, especially in the red zone. And the guy is pretty fast. He looks like a slow, wide receiver. He kind of looks like a slower version of Randy Moss. He gets open all the time. A lot Last week versus the Kansas City Chiefs, he ran beyond their secondary several times. Uh, the running game, is the, the, the stud runner is Doug Martin, and that's because Marshawn Lynch is hurt. Uh, Doug Martin is very, very physical. He's not uh, got the speed or the breakaway uh, running ability that he had when he was with the Tampa Bay Bucks. But one thing I'll tell you about uh, uh, Doug Martin, he is very physical. He does a great job of playing with a low pad level, and he's a great cutback runner. One of the things that you'll notice is that he'll cut it backside more times than not. Now, if he had a better offensive line, he'd probably have a lot more yards, but you see him hit the hole quick, and you see him uh, cut it back, and he still got it. He doesn't have the speed, the breakaway speed to take it to the house, but he does a great job of cutting it back against the grain. And then Jalen uh, Richard is their uh, backup running back. He's also their number one uh, leading receiver, and he also does a nice job with the jump cuts. He's very elusive. He's fast. Uh, when he gets to the open, he is going to uh, put it to you. He's got terrific hands. He's great out of the backfield. And if we stop him in the passing game, he and Jared Cook, I think the, the Steelers should have their way with the Oakland Raiders. Uh, Seth Roberts, number 10, is probably their fastest wide receiver. Uh, he's, the, he's a big slot receiver. Does a nice job of getting open. Uh, but l let me tell you this. Nobody on this offense besides Jared Cook really scares me. Uh, I think the Steelers should do a great job of bottling up Doug Martin. Uh, but let me tell you this, you can't over-pursue because he'll make you pay cutting it back across the grain. 
On the defensive side of the ball, nobody scares me here either. They don't have any great pass rushes. I think the, they made a mistake in getting rid of Khalil Mack because now, I, what do they have, only 10 sacks? Uh, that's pretty bad. And uh, their number one pass rusher is a rookie defensive tackle, Maurice Hurst. He is their three-technique guy. He jets upfield. He's, you know, he's not bad, but he doesn't scare you. He's not Aaron Donald. He's not Geno Atkins. He's kind of poor man's version of Geno Atkins. I mean, if you look at the defense, Paul Gunther is the defensive coordinator, who we remember from Cincinnati, and, uh, and they do a lot of some same stuff. They'll run some bear defense and goal line short yardage, or when you go two tight ends, they'll run the bear. Uh, you know, they, they try to get their three technique guys like Geno Atkins uh, going in the gap. And then they'll give you some of that uh, double A blitz look uh, as well. They also have, you know, the probably the best run stopper uh, linebacker is to hear Whitehead, uh, number 59. He's big, he's strong, he's fast. Uh, he, he can run and chase, and yet he can also play physical at the point of attack. I will say this about the defense. They do swarm to the ball, but they cannot stop the run, and they cannot rush the passer. Uh, you'll see a little bit of Emmanuel Lemur. Uh, we're, we saw him in Cincinnati. He's a, a, a coverage linebacker. They'll use him a lot on, on the uh, tight end. Also, Reggie Nelson, uh, who uh, Gunther brought, or who's there, and Gunther will use from time to time, but he's not starting either. So let me just synopsize this. Their defense can't stop the run. They can't rush the passer, and uh, there is nobody on that defense that scares me. So if I'm going into this game and I'm Randy Fiedner, the whole game plan is available to me. If I'm an offensive line man on the Steelers, I'm not really afraid of this pass rush. And I'll tell you another thing, they can't stop the run. So to uh, Bob Labriola's point, hey, I'm going to put it on, uh, on the five offensive linemen. Let's take them off the ball and let's physically dominate this game. All right, Tunch, thanks so much for the Sirius XM scouting report. For our Steelers Nation Unite members, the keyword today is touchdown. So at a SteelersNationUnite.com, enter the keyword touchdown to earn your extra yards for joining us here today on Steelers Live. That's going to do it for this edition. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Have a great night, everybody.